Hey guys, so um, today I wanted to kind of go over my Photoshop workflow for people who parallax map and kind of give you guys some insight into what I do and maybe um, teach you guys some stuff that you didn't know, hopefully. Um, so I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. Um, some of this is going to seem pretty redundant because it's pretty redundant, but to cover all my bases, I'm just going to do it like this. So um, when you export your map to Photoshop, this is pretty much what it is. Um, it's anything that's below here. I never export like my B, C, etc. I do that all in the editor just because, sorry, I do that all in Photoshop um, just because I find it a little bit more flexible. Um, but yeah, so I have like the base of my map made up. It's all the grass and the cliffs and the bridge, etc. And then I kind of work up from there. So the first thing I did was I um, built like the behind of my gates. So the player can go through the gate, but it kind of stops them um, over here. Um, and I have a couple houses, some foliage, etc. It's all that stuff that's behind there, just to keep it simple. That's that layer. And the gate and wall layer is this. So I couldn't get it to tile super nicely in the editor, so I had to like change it a little bit over here. So I just copied and pasted each little block um, to make it easier for me. We have grass, which is grass, obviously. So um, all of my little like green foliage. And then um, a tip that I like to tell people is when you're doing your grass, try to make sure that it's not super or uh, organic and not super um, gridded. So uh, I clumped this grass. I clumped it from like these small pieces. Um, and I try to make sure that it lap, uh, sorry, it travels onto tiles like road and stone and whatever, just to make it look a little bit more overgrown and a little bit more organic. Um, I did that down here as well. Do, do. Because if I didn't, it just made the road look super straight and this just makes it look nicer, in my opinion. Um, we have flowers, which is like my mushrooms and flowers, but nothing really to see here. They're kind of strewn out everywhere. We have crystals, which is all these. Um, I only have a couple, so nothing to really see. My water bears, which are those statues at the top. Um, so I really like these because they are so cute. They, um, this is like a little animated spot, so it just looks like they're pouring the water into the animated tiles, which I think is super cool. And then we have trees, which are trees. So the bottom layer is pretty basic. Um, it's not really where the fun is for me in parallax mapping. You kind of like lay out your stuff and you go from there. Um, so the top layer is where really like all the fun is. So I'm going to start with the very first thing that I do. So when I go into my top layer, which is anything that's above auto tiles and the character, um, the first thing I'll usually do if I have water on the map is create like walls to my water. So, um, that's what that looks like. It's right here. Blam, blam. Um, I'm going to increase the opacity so you can kind of see what it looks like. So basically what I do for this is I will create my like grid. I'll copy and paste a piece of my cliff. I'll control C and then control V it over and just like do, 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 um, connect them. And then I will grab a eraser. Um, I'll have it pretty large and I'll have my flow pretty low. So instead of 70, it'd probably be about 30. And I'll like travel along my edges and just like make them look better. Um, there you go. So I do that for everything. If you have like a corner water piece, so like right here, um, you're going to instead copy like a corner cliff so that it looks more natural. Um, I think that just adds like a lot of depth to the water. See what I mean? Cool. And then waterfall walls is the same thing, but for my waterfalls, just to keep them separate for me. Um, Cause sometimes, I don't know, it depends. Like in the editor, it's just easier to keep things in separate layers. Cause like these water cliffs might look nice at a 50% opacity, but the waterfall cliffs might need to be lowered. So it's a whole lot easier just to do it that way. Um, tree tops is the tops of all the trees that are cut in half. So yeah, we have water plants. Um, which is anything that's on the water. So um, the reason why they're in a top layer is because if they are in the ground layer, the auto tiles will cover them. So we need to make sure that they are pasted above the auto tiles. And then I have a color dodge for those as well. So um, 
something that I figured out the hard way, and I like couldn't figure it out for the life of me for some reason, was that Color Dodge needs to be exported into your editor um, with an item to blend into. So say I was to delete the bottom and I was to open up Aqua Color Dodge, for example. Um, you can see that the color is all here. But what's gonna happen is when I export that and use it in my editor, it's going to look super muddy because it has nothing to actually blend into. So it's like this random, like, it'll look, um, in the editor, this'll look like gray, pretty much, and it'll look muddy. So um, when it comes to color dodging, if you're using color dodge on your maps to make them look a little bit more ethereal, you wanna make sure that you are doing it properly. Um, Cause I wasn't, and I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. Anyways, so yeah. Um, so I have color dodge like separately. So when I export my ground layer, I use this. And when I export my top layer, I just use the color dodge that's in that top folder, if that makes sense. Um, same thing, so I have crystal towers. So they're above because if I don't put them above this water auto tile will cover it. And then color dodge. So that's a magenta color dodge, um, which I'll show you when I get up to the top. So it's the exact same thing. So I create a clipping mask. I put it on the item in question, and then I export it in my top folder. Super easy. We have cast shadows. So I love, I honestly love like shading and lighting. I think it's so much more fun to play with, even if I'm not like perfect. Um, so for my cast shadow layer, I will increase the opacity and show you guys what I did. So you can kind of see um, how I Blam, blam, create my light. So when you, I just use a global light source basically. So I always pretend, oops, I did that wrong. I'm just gonna create a new layer and show you guys. So I always pretend that my light is coming from here. Um, and that's like my global light for pretty much everything that I do. So yeah, so you know where your light is coming from and what it's gonna hit. So when I, you know what, I'm just gonna delete this and show you guys what I do because this is kind of confusing. So I'm gonna do another layer. I'm gonna create a layer mask first. I'm gonna fill it in black. I'm gonna set it to multiply, which doesn't really matter if you're using black, but it's a good habit to get into so you don't forget to do that. And then I'm going to go onto my layer mask. I'm gonna press D for, de uh, for default colors. So I have white, I don't want white. I'm gonna press X to switch. Um, I'm going to increase this to 150. My flow's at 30 still, which is good. So you want a low flow when you're like painting out shadow so it looks a little bit more natural. And my opacity is 100, which is, it's always 100. So I'm going to start like carving out where my light is. So for me, I know that this water is kind of like ethereal and glowing. So I'm just going to kind of go over this. Blam. Uh, and do the same thing over here. I'm gonna do this really quickly. It's not gonna look as good as the one I already did, but whatever. I'm gonna shift click down just to kind of blend all this easy. So something that you guys might not know if you're new to Photoshop is if you click and you press shift and then click again, it creates a straight line from where you were before. Um, so I find that really useful when I'm doing like shadowing along like a long line or something like that. But anyways, that's a shortcut that I find super useful that I don't think a lot of people know about. So there you go. There's some of that. Um, what I really like to do with trees, if they have greenery on them, because a lot of the trees in my maps don't, um, is use like maybe 80. Yeah, 80 looks good. Um, and kind of just like keep it free. I'm sorry, lighten it around your light source. So I know the moonlight's coming through here. It's going to hit it right there. Blam. So much prettier than this. Um, so when you're doing your cast shadow, or sorry, not cast shadows, when you're doing your shadows layer, um, you wanna make sure that you're like highlighting the things that would be highlighted. Um, it creates a lot more dimension to your map automatically. So I'm just gonna delete that because I feel like you guys have enough. Blam. I'm gonna open this again. And I'm gonna just kind of flip it on and off so you guys can kind of see like where I remove my shadows. Easy, right? Okay, I'm gonna lower that back to whatever it was. I think it was 40. I have no idea. <laughs> um, ambient occlusion shadows are like the shadows along the edges of items. 
So if I remove this, you'll see that they're like along the sides of my trees and along the sides of my cliffs. I'm um, just anywhere where shadows would naturally gather where you want a little bit extra that your map didn't already give you. Blam. We have gate shadows, which are the ones just underneath my gate, and then the fun stuff. So photo filter I always use for my photo, sorry, my um, parallax maps just because it makes them look so pretty. And whenever you're exporting, you wanna have the photo filter on each layer. So if you're exporting your bottom, make sure it's still on. If you're exporting your top, make sure it's still on so that it affects all items. Um, and I'm just using one of the basic ones, it's super easy. So the cooling filter LBB. Um, it's kind of like a sapphire -y color when it's on the map, so it just creates like a more natural nighttime scene, as you can see. Very pretty. Um, we have Color Dodge in Magenta, which is blam, 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 all those crystals. And then Color Dodge in Aqua, which is the water itself. Um, color Dodge is just like super ethereal looking. I definitely advise you to watch some tutorials on it um, because it's like one of the more useful um, like blending options for me anyways when I'm creating maps. Um, and I think that's it. So when I'm exporting, um, I have my top all organized already. I have my color dodge and stuff in there already. Um, so I pretty much just delete this. I'll export these ones together. It's super, super organized. And then I'll do my top. I'll get rid of those. Like I said, if you export the color dodge um, into your editor in this like layer that doesn't have any items below it, um, it'll look really muddy. So I just go like that. And then that is my parallax mapping flow um, kind of at a glance. Um, if there's anything in this tutorial that you guys want me to expand on, um, please let me know. I just kind of wanted to do a video to let you guys know that I'm not dead and I'm still working away on stuff. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Bye.